Hello everybody. Thanks again for visiting my YouTube channel where we discuss the Lord's Recovery Movement also known as the Local Church Movement of Witness Lee. wanted to carry on a little bit about the spiritual authority thing. I think it's a huge issue. I think it's the root of almost all the error in the Lord's Recovery this idea that the Lord's Recovery leaders have some kind of far-reaching authority. Got another message from a listener who has been out of shape about some of my statements about the shepherdingwords.com website where they make this case for spiritual authority according to Watchman Nee's teachings. Well, let me just say right now, okay, Watchman Nee is not the Bible. And his interpretation of the Bible, we are not beholden to anyone to believe it. Everyone has to go to the Lord, to the Word, and pray over it and decide what's true. Well, the people in the Lord's Recovery don't do this. They just take Watchman Nee's words as a given truth. Why? Because somehow they've decided he has the spiritual authority that they have to submit to. They can't challenge it. They can't question it. They give in to it before they have any reason to because he's Watchman Nee. And it's really a circular argument because Watchman Nee stated that spiritual authority is manifested by ministry. Well, he doesn't back that up with any scripture. He just states it. Well, I don't see any truth in that. Ministry is manifested by ministry. Spiritual authority is not manifested by ministry. Spiritual authority, as he conceived it, I don't even think it really exists in any state close to the application they gave it. They would imbue a person with a subjective label of spiritual authority simply because at one time in their life they had some kind of ministry. That is extremely dangerous because if one of those people have a fall, there is no way to protect God's people from the damage. And this is precisely what happened with Witness Lee. In 1988, in the Lord's Recovery, there was a conference and an elders meeting, and the Philip Lee scandal was in full flight. Philip Lee, Witness Lee's son, who was a serial molester, was caught several times molesting Lord's Recovery women in the Living Stream offices. And for some reason, Philip Lee had been put in charge of the Living Stream ministry, and he was even swinging his weight around with local church elders trying to get them to buy ministry materials. And he was somebody who was completely ill-suited for the job, and he had been caught. And it was a scandal within the Lord's Recovery leadership. Witness Lee circled the wagons and decided everybody who was complaining about this was some kind of rebel. In one conference in Pasadena, November 1988, he flipped out in an elders meeting and started ranting about how he was the Oracle of God and the Oracle of God was with him and he was special and he went on a rant that really showed where he was in his heart. There is a dynamic in human nature to tend to think of oneself as special if you have been given a special gift or a special job let's just say maybe you're president of the United States. Well, not everybody gets to be president of the United States by far. And anybody who gets in that position has to be tempted to think he or she is someone pretty special. I know I've experienced that in certain areas. I think we all have. If you get elected president of the high school booster club, you might think, well, hey, I'm somebody. Well, this is what happened to Witness Lee to an extreme. He just could not resist the temptation to think he was somebody special. So he got proud. This became a terrible thing because he aligned his theology in a way that defended himself at the expense of others. This whole thing of spiritual authority is very dangerous because that's the kind of results you can get. Let me just read some of the things Witness Lee said in this meeting. And you be the judge whether this is the words of a spiritual godly person or somebody who's gone off the deep end. Now these words are recorded by a man named John Ingalls who has since passed away. He was a top leader in the Lord's Recovery. I've mentioned him before. He was run out on a rail because of this Philip Lee scandal. But he reacted to this because John Ingalls was truly a godly man and his conscience just could not tolerate what he saw going on around him. And he recorded it in a book he released called Speaking the Truth in Love where he gave his side of the story. And of course he was criticized as being rebellious and poisonous words and all this because 
they'll allow you to leave their movement, but if you say anything bad about them, that means you're some kind of terrible person. Because anybody who says anything bad about them is a terrible person. But this is what he recorded in this book, Speaking the Truth in Love. Let me just read the first paragraph to set you up. On the Thanksgiving Day weekend of November 1988, Brother Lee, just returned from Taiwan, held a conference of five meetings in the auditorium of the Pasadena City College in California. The conference was followed by an elders meeting November 27th in the meeting place of the church in San Gabriel. In that meeting, Brother Lee proclaimed that though he had a hall in Anaheim, he was not happy to use it, no doubt because of certain people who were in Anaheim. The brothers in the Los Angeles area invited him to have a conference and arrange the place in Pasadena. He said when he heard that it would be in Pasadena, he was happy. These people, he said, exalt me. I am happy to be exalted. So where we are with this is this scandal had come out. Many of the saints in Anaheim were angry with Brother Lee because they heard this news that he was turning a blind eye to the fact his son was molesting volunteers women who were volunteers in the Lemmy Stream ministry. And Lee was not really doing as much about it as he should have. His reaction is to fall back, find some people that support him, and then fight back with these kind of words. The first thing he targeted was the idea of autonomy, the autonomy of churches. Witness Lee had taught at one time, and it was even in a hymn, in his hymnal, that each local church has administration local each answering to the Lord. Well, he decided he didn't really like that teaching anymore because it left him with too little control. So he adjusted it to say, well, you can have local administration of practical details, but the spiritual issues should be directed largely by the ministry of the age, which of course was him. Brother Ingalls goes on to say, Brother Lee was in a fighting spirit in this meeting, fighting against autonomy and federation. Witness Lee went on to argue that he created terms like experiencing Christ and enjoying Christ, which was false. He did not invent those terms. He apparently was so isolated in his thinking that he thought he was the source of a lot of ideas that he was not the source of. Then he went on to say, Lee has to be famous. Lee, 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 Lee must have the credit. And if you listen to me, you do not listen to Lee. You listen to the very God in his oracle spoken by me. A little later in his message, he said, going on with God's oracle. Surely there is the deputy authority of God in this oracle. Whoever speaks for God, he surely has a certain divine authority. I am claiming this for Lee. Brother Ingalls goes on to ask the question, are these the words of a sober man, the words of a spiritual man, a man of God? And you'd be crazy to say they were. And at the end of this section of the book, Brother Ingalls says, Brother Lee was beside himself in this meeting. I had never personally observed him in such a state as I witnessed him there. He was obviously exceedingly agitated. So, we have his continuation, the Blended Brothers, who have the same attitude, and I'm sure they just think that was A-OK -okay for Witness Lee to be ranting like that, because they have this attitude, if you have a ministry, then anything else about you doesn't matter. You are the spiritual authority, and people need to submit to you. I have said in the past, to make a point, this attitude of devotion to Witness Lee, to not being able to view him as a normal human being who has flaws, but rather as this oracle, is something that is pathological. And I said that if in this meeting Witness Lee had pulled out a gun and shot John Ingalls between the eyes and killed him right there, there are some of these guys who would still be going around saying he was the oracle of God and still defending him to this day. I believe that. They wouldn't go, oh, maybe he wasn't that. They'd still be defending him. This is the attitude they have, and it's dangerous. And now they're on this website, shepherdingwords.com, trying to defend this attitude of spiritual authority which created this monster. Got a comment from a listener who is still trying to defend this stuff. And I'm pretty sure in my first answer to him, I answered all the questions I needed to answer that the only reason they're stating this stuff is to bolster Witness Lee. Why? Because they're locked in what I've called this fail-safe mindset. 
that it's brotherly all the way, come hell or high water. They're going to go down with the ship. They think they've got some kind of reward from God coming for being faithful to Witness Lee. But it's irrational. And at some point you have to say, you know what? I'm out of here. I'm out of here. And I'm really happy that a lot of you have done that. But some of us have to also speak out in retrospect about this because they continue to hurt people with this. The spiritual authority as put forth by Watchman Nee and Witness Lee is a doctrine of demons. That's what it is. It's an abuse of the word of God with the intent to get control of people to push an agenda that is theirs. And it doesn't matter what the intent is. I don't care if they believe they're accomplishing God's purpose or not. That doesn't justify these means. So I encourage all of you just to reject it. Find God speaking, yes. Listen to God. Listen to his word. Listen to his authority. If he speaks through someone and you really register that God's speaking through them, then listen. But this just wholesale seeding of authority to a person because he has a, quote, ministry, unquote, is ridiculous. It's dangerous, it produces bad fruit, and you should reject it. That's my advice. But I'm not claiming to have that authority. I'm not claiming to be an oracle. I'm not claiming anything other than these are my convictions, and I'm speaking them. And you can listen to them, or you don't have to. But I am not going to post comments of people that simply come in with a rational defense of Witness Lee at all costs. Those comments will not be posted on my website. You want to come in and have a decent conversation, brother to brother, as a fellow Christian, we can do that. But if you're just going to be a mindless witness lead defender, it ain't going to happen. Okay, like I say, go to local church discussions with that, and you can go around and around, and people can ignore you there. Okay, so thanks again for listening, guys. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support, and thank you for your clicking like on my videos. Take care.